What we come here to talk about this weekend has been a, another weekend of mayhem in Macon. We started off Saturday night with a homicide of 30-year-old uh, Michael Chapman. He was shot dead in the middle of the street out on Burke Street off of Houston Avenue. Uh, very quickly, our gang unit and criminal intelligence and criminal investigation was able to develop a suspect, and we have a suspect uh, identified in that case who is still at large. Uh, that subject is Dequavius Howard. And then yet again last night, 17-year-old Pedro Garcia uh, was seen to be a victim of a robbery. Uh, there are two suspects been identified very quickly in that. One of those suspects has already been taken into custody. He's being questioned. We have you know, yet another suspect uh, that is still at large that we're looking for. Uh, in this case, uh, Jarese Pollard, age 17, has been taken into custody and has been charged in this in this homicide. Now, uh, we'll do this if y'all have some questions. I think some of you have some more specific questions about some overall crime, and then we're going to talk about some other things that are happening. I see we have one of our partners, uh, Crime Stoppers, is here. Uh, uh, Warren Selby, that uh, is instrumental in helping us solve some of these cases, and they're always on the front lines, and we have others that are out there helping too. So. I'll be happy to take any questions and then we'll go through, we have a little presentation here that sort of will support some of the answers that I may have to some of your questions. So, uh, so go ahead, anybody. Well, I think one trend we might be seeing is the young age of the people involved in these violent crimes. Um, what do you think we can do as a community to kind of prevent that and is that something you are seeing? Well, here in the last month or six weeks, it has truly been a striking trend of young teenagers. And as we uh, investigate these cases, we find that all of these individuals are somehow uh, know each other or know of each other or somehow related neighborhood-wise, uh, friendship-wise, whether it be social media or personal friendship. So there's a connection with a lot of these individuals dating all the way back to uh, the cases back in uh, uh, the beginning of, of August. Uh, this, this is a troubling trend of teenagers that we're seeing now. Typically on any given year, we don't see more than maybe two or three of our homicides that involve teenagers. Most of them are in the 20s, 30s, even 40s and 50s. But this, this is a troubling trend that we're seeing here recently. And it all seems to be connected to each other. They all seem to know each other or have some type of, of, of knowledge about what has happened to to others, and some of it is senseless. The one Saturday night is just senseless uh, over some foolish argument or some foolish uh, disagreement. Uh, last night uh, with uh, Mr. Garcia seems to have been uh, some type of robbery or some type of altercation between the two of them, but uh, that is uh, that is a troubling trend. Is there any connection from the Chapman murder to the four-year-old that was run over and someone was shooting at the, the parents? None that we can establish right now, but it shows that mindset. It shows that mindset of, uh, of, of uncaring. It shows that mindset of, uh, of uh, the impulsiveness and just uh, acting on the spur of the moment. Uh, particularly the, the, the homicide Saturday night uh, was a, seemed to be a, uh, a spur of the moment, the slightest thing, get somebody ticked off and, and been on revenge and you put a gun in their hand, it's going to uh, end up in tragic consequences. And that's what we're seeing to see more and more in these cases. So nobody targeting that family? Because I think that four-year-old was a part of the same family that that Chapman, was. it's the same, nothing? It, it, it could be in some general area. We're still watching that to see what, you know, what commonality, as I said before, there seems to be some connection with a lot of these individuals. and. And it would not surprise me if that doesn't pan out. Uh, listen, Macon is not so huge that everybody is somehow connected to other folks. And these folks, they, they sort of stay in certain neighborhoods and in certain areas of town. So uh, there is some connection there. There is some uh, commonality of friends, family, uh, relationships, which sort of blossom out into these uh, conflicts. Beyond geographic relationships, what do you think that these common threads are? Connectivity are. Uh, 
Holy Spirit. I mean, we're not looking at gang-related stuff. Or well, you're not looking at gang-related per se. I would say that a lot of these individuals are in gangs. Uh, just about all of them would, if you if you talk to them and they would be honest, they would tell you they are a member of some gang or another. But it's not uh, the furtherance of any type of gang, uh, uh, gang uh, furtherance or gang initiatives or or the, 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 the livelihood of the gang. That's not what's here. It's a personal. And some of these is people who know one another who may be in the same gang that uh, run afoul of each other. But it goes back to that ruthlessness, uh, that uh, lack of parental uh, uh, involvement, parental care. We've said before, uh, these parents uh, are, have these kids that are basically running their household. And we need to do what we can uh, through the sheriff's office and through the community, but I implore the larger community, the faith community, uh, the, the nonprofit, the community, whoever, to reach out into some of these families and make a difference in their lives and, and do something so that these 17-year-olds are not walking up and down the street carrying firearms and, and settling some petty score with, uh, with uh, violence. And with that connectivity, and you said sometime in the specific areas, is there anything your office is doing um, in those specific areas where you do see that connectivity? Yes, we are. Santel, roll it. When we talk about what we've done this year, I'm gonna try to get where y'all can show us. All right, well, we talked, now that's all the homicides. When somebody had asked us about commercial robberies, go back to that just a minute. When we're talking about the armed robberies and commercial robberies, Really, this year, we're down 18% from what we had last year. We're down in burglaries and uh, thefts from what we were last year. Our other crime trends, other than the violence, particularly homicide, we're trending a little bit lower or right along with what we've been doing in years previous. So the outlier this year is the homicide rate that we've had and these, and these uh, violent score settlings that we've been dealing with. Uh, ask the robbers, go to the, uh, uh, go to the arrest, uh, Santel, the ones that we've arrested. Between, bet just so far this year, between our operations Neighborhood Redemption, which is our specialized enforcement unit that goes into these targeted areas that you're talking about, that goes in and, and arrests the people, uh, puts some emphasis on some of these places, our two uh, uh, Operation Blueprint and Operation Shockwave, we arrested 1,001 people so far this year. Uh, and so we've taken folks off the street. Now show the next one how many guns we've taken. So far this year, we've seen 1,601 firearms. Now equate that to, we, we, we see more guns than what these operations have arrested. So sometimes we see more than one gun from people. So our folks are out there every day, and it troubles us. And I know you've heard the refrain, yes, we're short, yes, we're short, we hire and we want to hire people, we want folks to come and work for us. But those people who are here are dedicated, they're working double time, almost triple time to get these cases solved. You had some of the same investigators that were out Saturday night solving that case from sundown to sun up to have a suspect identified before the sun rises. Those same investigators were out last night working the same case to get a, a two suspects identified and uh, brought to justice within just a matter of hours. So our folks are working double time, triple time to be out to, uh, to solve these cases. We need some help from the larger community. We need some help from these families and folks to, uh, to get in these houses and make a difference. They're not going to do too much with us. They think we're coming to arrest them. Some other folks can come in and make a difference in some of these houses because some of these parents are telling us that when we go to arrest their 17-year-old their or their 16-year-old, they're telling us, I do all I can do with them. Y'all need to help us. And so they're what the parents realize they're over their heads too. But then on the other hand, we have some parents, no, that's not my child. My child would never do anything like that. And so sometimes we have to show them, yes, your child will do something. Anybody else? And so, Sheriff Davis, when you say that you need help from these uh, community leaders or the parents in these homes, what else can you guys do 
within the department in order to intercept these these young teens who might be quick to go to violence. Very good. Linda, look behind you and give me those book books, please. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need, uh, it's not so much, we need the help. What we need is we need uh, the help to help our shortage. But when I say we, I say that we as a collective, as a community, this community needs the help of people to step up whether it's the nonprofits, whether it's the government, whether it's the faith-based community, it's whether whoever to step up and make a difference. That is the biggest help that those entities can do for us as, as anything. So when I say we, I say that as a collective, as well as the sheriff's office, we need that help as well as others. Some of the things that we're doing at the sheriff's office is this booklet here that we have produced, our commitment to the community, which has almost 30 uh, different programs that the sheriff's office does to uh, impact this community, to impact the youth, to impact grown folks, whether it's a neighborhood watch, our explorer program, our champs program, our considered consequences program, uh, our business watch, any of those programs, our crime stoppers uh, that we partner with, all of these things. We say pick a program and help us. Pick a program and help us. And if there's not anything in the book here that you can help us with, reach out in your own neighborhood, on your own street, and make a difference. And how? Where are the firearms are coming from? The firearms, where are they coming from? Uh, some of them are stolen. Some of them are legally purchased. Some of them are traded out for drugs, for whatever. Uh, a few of them we do find are stolen. We are finding commonalities amongst these firearms that are being used. This new uh, NIVIN system that we have is able to cross-link uh, ballistics from one uh, firearm incident to another firearm incident. We're beginning to build links to that, which makes us have more suspects for more crimes, but th they get them. People leaving their cars unlocked with a gun up under the seat, and then the gun gets stolen and either they don't report it or they don't know their serial number. So we may be dealing with more scope stolen guns than we than we realize, but they don't they don't have the information for us to enter into the database to uh, to, to register it as stolen. So it, it runs the gamut of where these where these firearms come from. And so how are we going to be able to get those teenagers into those programs or, or get them involved? Is there anything that, that you guys are doing here um, in order to kind of lead the horse to, to water in those circumstances? Well, our, our outreach section is working every day to make contacts through the schools, through some of the churches. Uh, we have a Facebook uh, a page where people can get to us, our website. We have telephone numbers. They can call the sheriff's office directly. Uh, we, we've had this booklet out for only a couple of months, so we're really getting things uh, 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 rolling with it. But these programs, some of them have been in existence for years and years. And sometimes we're looking for people to be involved in it. They was telling me the uh, Explorers program. We're looking for more uh, individuals to be involved in that. Don't worry, we won't get overloaded. As many kids, we'll find the money to put them in the program uh, if we just get the, uh, get the kids to participate. Warren, you want to say anything from Crime Stoppers then? 